our Steve from the Mountaintop Joiner Shop here. Uh, why don't I just cut to the chase and tell you what I'm up to. So I recently knocked together this drawer here. These are all hand cut dovetails and hopefully the layout of the dovetails and the grooves and everything make more sense later. I'll be sure to explain that but what I'm doing right now is uh, cleaning up these dovetails because dovetails almost always need it and it occurred to me that this is something that uh, some people might appreciate seeing how I do and I'm sure there's multiple ways to do it But the way I've been doing it seems to work out really well for me So uh, hopefully this is something that gives some people some ideas for how to clean up their own hand cut dovetails in their shops So without any further ado, let's go on over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm up to So as is often the case in woodworking in order to do things you're going to need things and the things you're going to need to do this particular operation include your workbench you're going to need some kind of hold fast. This one's by Gramercy Tools. These are great. I have a couple of them. Now you're going to need some kind of planing stop. This one here is by Veritas Tools. And it is almost as long as my bench is wide, which is helpful, but not totally necessary. But you'll see why it's helpful in a moment. One thing people don't always think about having handy is a straight edge. And this one's a little bit long for our purposes, but it'll still be good to have handy. And uh, a vise is good to have, although again, it's not totally necessary. I used to use the same technique on my old workbench, which didn't have a vise at all. I just had a crochet hook. So this, this technique will still work if you don't have a vise, but uh, I'm going to use my leg vise in this particular instance. And perhaps the most important thing you're going to need in order to do this is this big hunk of wood. And if you're a woodworker, hopefully you have something like this around. Uh, this is an eight quarter piece of maple that I had saved from a commission I did a long time ago. And it's longer than my bench is wide, which is important. You'll see why in a moment. And it's probably, I don't know, maybe eight inches wide or so. So it's, it's a good size for this. And as such, I've kept it handy all these years. And this is the only purpose that it's served. So I wanna bring you on over to the bench so you can get a, a little bit better look at what I'm doing here and uh, we'll get started. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to mention, yeah, you're gonna need a hand plane to do this. Uh, that's another thing you're gonna need. Although I imagine you could do this with a lot of sanding as well, but I usually, I do, you know, I save the sanding for the kind of the end when I'm just kind of sanding away any uh, planing marks that need to go away. And sometimes they don't need to go away. Sometimes it's fine if your drawers have little planing tracks on the sides of them. That's kind of part of the appeal of doing something handmade. And I spoke at length about doing handmade things in a way that is uh, imperfect and human in a video that I call the craft value paradox. So uh, maybe check that out if you're curious about all that kind of philosophy business. But what we're up to here is cleaning up some dovetails. So I got my planing stop here in the bench and it's in a row of dog holes that's just on my side of my leg vise, which you can just barely see over here in the corner of the frame. And then I'll take my big hunk of eight quarter maple and slide, actually slide it against the wall back here, put it up against my planing stop. And then at the back end here is where I put my holdfast. So I'm gonna knock that tight. And now I have a platform hanging off the side of my bench that gives me a nice stable place to hang a drawer box or any kind of box that does has dovetails in it. And I have just enough space to kind of fit it in between the vise and my supporting piece of wood here. I'll move it right up to the vise screw, but not touch it because I don't want the vise screw to mar the side of my drawer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up my vise. So it's helpful if you have a vise that has a lot of capacity to it in order to kind of snake it in there. Um, mine has about 21 and a half centimeters, maybe just over that of space uh, when it's fully opened, which I, I think is like eight and a half inches or so. So um, it's really nice if you have that extra capacity there. And as far as the layout of my dovetails is concerned, the way I did it this way is because I'm gonna have a false front on here. So this is a piece of walnut that I resawed off of this piece of wood here to create a false front that hangs over the sides a little bit. So in the end, it'll have a little bit of that kind of half blind dovetail look to it, but it'll have a little bit of overhang to cover the fronts of the uh, drawer slides I'm gonna be using, because I'm actually using metal drawer slides on this project, which is, which is crazy, I know, but that's what the client wanted. And so I don't really wanna look at the fronts 
of those drawer slides when the drawer is, well, open or closed, as the case may be. So that's what I'm going for with that. And that's why, you know, I didn't bother hiding my little drawer groove there, any of that. So now that I have this tightened here and supported here, I now have a nice stable platform from which to plane my dovetails flush. And I'm always planing in from the leading edge of the drawer box. If I were to plane off of this end here, you're liable to break off all kinds of fibers off of the end of here, the chunks, splinters even. And that, of course, is no bueno. That'll make your dovetails look real bad. So uh, I always plane into the face of the drawer and not off the end of it. And I use my smoothing plane in most cases. That leaves a nice, you know, clean finish. Uh, even on the end grain, even with a high angle blade, I tend to get a pretty nice finish on it. So, and like I was saying earlier, even if you don't have a vise, you can do this. What you end up doing instead is pushing your drawer all the way across the face of this until the inside of your drawer back here is up, butting up against this end of your supporting workpiece. And then when you're planting into that corner, you've got plenty of support. And yeah, the, the drawer might kind of move around a little bit while you're doing it, but it's enough support in order to make that happen. So it still works, even if you don't have a vise. And you may have noticed that some of the other things that I keep handy when I'm doing this are uh, the straight edge. So these are getting nice and smooth already. But when you're planing like this, if I'm only planing on this end and I flip it around and I'm only planing on that end, what is liable to happen is the middle's going to end up a little bit high. And that's why I keep my straight edge handy. <laughs> So you can see here, it's definitely high in the middle. That's why I just leave it where it is and go ahead and plane the high spots out. And I'm just taking very, very wispy, thin shavings off of there. Very thin. Because, you know, I'm not trying to take a ton of material off. I just want to flush this up. A little bit better, but still not quite there. All through here is a little bit high. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to hit those spots. Maybe cut a little bit thicker shaving. And I'm fortunate in that this uh, piece of walnut here, as gnarly as it is, it's going to get covered up by that false front I showed you. So I really don't have to worry about tear out or any of that in this particular case, but that's another reason using a smoothing plane as opposed to like a jack plane or even a joiner plane is probably a good idea. Taking thin shavings with a high angle blade makes it less likely you're gonna have that much tear out. And what little you get will hopefully either scrape or sand out. But that's kind of the idea. What are we looking at here? Ooh. Real close. Keep on keeping on. <sighs> Obviously, if these were the sides of your drawers and they kind of bowed out like that, it can make the action of your drawer, if it is fitting into a uh, wooden drawer pocket, uh, it can make the fit of your drawers not so good and they might not slide so smooth. So. That's an important thing to remember is that when you clean up your dovetails, you could knock the sides out of flat and need to remove some material in the middle like I'm doing now. Nice and flat. That will do. So now I have to do is clean up my false front, glue that on there and flush it up and that'll be looking real good. Um, another thing that I will sometimes do uh, when I want my uh, drawer size to look really nice and clean is to just go over them with some, maybe some 220 and then 320 sandpaper. Um, I'm one of those weird people that likes to apply finish to my drawers, even though they don't technically need that. That's just how I roll. So uh, I like to make my drawers nice and pretty. So 
the potential client could pull a drawer out that I've hand cut these dovetails on and show it off to their friends. So, and then I'll go ahead and wax the drawers. So that's kind of all there is to it. Snake that out of there, turn it a little bit, snake it back in, try not to hit the vise screw, tighten that down. Now, one thing you do want to be careful of is not cranking down your vise really hard because if you've cut grooves for your drawer bottom in there, you can actually, especially if you cut too deep, you can easily break that whole bottom piece off of your drawer side by crushing it in a vise. So be careful you don't get carried away and tighten the living daylights out of your vise when you're putting this in place. Take her easy. Now I can go ahead and do this side and rinse and repeat all the way around. That's that. So I think I've said all I need to say about this particular operation and it's an uncharacteristically short video on my part, but uh, I hope you'll agree that it was worth the effort. In the meantime, I'm gonna spend some time with the family and after that I have some things planned. I'm going to be doing a small product review of a product that was sent to me uh, that I'd like to try out in a more hand tool oriented shop like mine. So we'll see how that goes. I also have a small project build video that I'm gonna be doing for people that are a little bit more on the beginner end of the spectrum. So we'll do a, a project from start to finish um, that I designed a long time ago that I think will have some appeal. And then I also have a commission coming up. I'm gonna be doing a trestle table that is of my own design, albeit to the client's uh, preferences. And that'll be more of a long format, big project build video that I know some of you have been clamoring for. So if you've been uh, waiting for me to do that kind of thing, just stick around and we'll get to it. So I appreciate you watching. In the meantime, I'll catch you next time. Now, if you like what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe. It'd help me out a lot. Also hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I release a new video. And if you didn't like what you saw here, keep it to yourself, pal. Or watch one of my other videos. You might like one of those. Thank you for watching.